David, welcome to Leadership Disrupted. Thanks, Mark. Great to, great to be able to catch up. Now, what I really wanted to talk to you about today is um, the acceleration of uptake of digital technology. All companies are talking about it. It's all over the press. But you're right on the front line of this within uh, Standard Chartered Bank. Can you, can you tell me how, how, because of the COVID-19 crisis, this may have accelerated uh, digital uptake? Absolutely. Um, pr probably answer the question, uh, which is front of mind for everyone, I think, uh, as business leaders, in two parts. Firstly, you know, the digital elements of our own business. And then secondly, the digital elements that we are experiencing as customers expect us to you know, inter interact in a different way. You know, on the first one, you know, clearly sort of in, the, in January, February timeframe for our business, um, you know, we, we went into a mode where we had to very, very quickly get the bulk of our people working from home. And so we were, in some cases, over 70% globally, and in certain countries, India being an example, at 97% of our workforce working from home. Um, that required us to you know, really, really challenge uh, how we worked. The introduction of uh, a lot of digital capabilities, such as this meeting that we're running, other tools to do electronic whiteboarding, you know, Trello to manage work and workflow. Uh, all of these were new tools that we rolled out absolutely at high speed um, and have had a profound impact. You know, they've really changed the way people are able to do their jobs. And I think as you fast forward, you know, for the first phase, I would say people were, let's put on hold a few transformational things and, and, and the adjustment of our business because we'll wait till we get back to normal. I think people are realizing that this may well be the normal and therefore those transformational aspects are no longer on board. So they're, they're really starting to use these tools. And, and we're seeing, you know, thinking about that end-to-end -end flow through our business, really looking at every piece of automation that needs to be done. A lot of the last mile things that, you, you know, in the past we would have de-scoped and deprioritized are now coming to the forefront. Um, so I think it's, it's profound. The reflection that I often have is none of the stuff that we're doing is new. Uh, we, we were discussing it 12 and 18 months before and it paused or delayed or not gone as fast as we should have. And in hindsight, the question is, why didn't we go faster and commit to this? Because you know, clearly it is essential to have a resilient business. And what we're finding is in a number of cases, it's actually driving uh, an uplift in our productivity and effectiveness. With regards to customers, you know, what I think our customers have realized is that, you know, resilience is now a core competency in your business. It's not something that you just inspect on an ad hoc basis. And that, you know, deep resilience invariably requires you to digitize your business and all of the interactions you have with people like us as a key partner and other suppliers in your supply chain. And so I think our customers are, are thinking very deeply about their digitization and are demanding us to think about our solutions in a different way. And so really driving this into end thinking um, and, and with a vein of them becoming more relevant, um, more resilient, and quite frankly, reducing risk. You know, you want to reduce the numbers of interactions in a physical sense so that you don't get exposed to a virus. You find that this way of working is inherently more convenient. It gives you time back. Um, but what we're also going to see is customers challenging ourselves around, you know, we typically think of our digitization at the sort of boundaries of our business, but actually it's going to need to go all the way into customers' businesses and make it easy. Our products need to be more digital. We need to provide more data and telemetry. We need to be able to enable AI where that's appropriate. So I think this digitization agenda that we're going to see, uh, have seen, is just embryonic. I think it's going to be profound, it's going to be pervasive, and it's going to be enduring. And I, th and I think it's an exciting time to be doing business, uh, quite frankly. Oh, it's good to hear the positive side of that. Um, I just want to pick up on something. You, you, you brought up the word risk, and it seems that uh, in accelerating the adoption of digital technologies, decisions are having uh, to be made quicker. Is this bringing more risk in, into that decision-making? Um, yeah, interesting perspective and one that we get asked quite a lot, particularly being regulators. Um, I have a, quite a challenging contrarian view, which is actually I think it's significantly lower risk. The reason being that when we make these decisions, because we know we have to do them at pace, 
we get all of the constituent parties that need to be part of that decision. You know, business people, tech people, risk and compliance people. We articulate what the intention is, why we need to do it, how we want to do it, so that we can be confident that we're doing it in a safe way. We typically run a bunch of small experiments really quickly just to make sure that we understand it. And invariably, we learn stuff through that because you can never get the whole thing right. We modify off those, try a bit more scale, and when we're confident, then we deploy globally rapidly. And so what we're seeing is solutions going global quite quickly that are actually pretty robust, um, pretty well understood by all parties. And there is a very clear articulation of what the risks are. Let's be clear, there's nothing we do in our lives that is risk-free. What we want to be able to do is make be choiceful about the risks we choose to take on, and then in that choice, be clear about the mitigations that we put in place to manage it. And I think what we're seeing in this world is that that's happening with much greater fidelity than what, what it used to in an old way of working, which was a lot more siloed and a lot more serial. David, that, that's absolutely fascinating. I suppose the next aspect for me uh, and I don't think we've got time to do that today, we, we, we'll be to just, uh, uh, I suppose, explore the leadership challenges and and maintaining culture and values through, through all of that. So hopefully we can come back next week and, and we can look at that. Thank you for your time today. Sounds like a good idea. Thanks, Mark.